In this video, we are going to look at a few examples of relations that are not functions. In our first example, we have a relation R. It's defined on the real numbers, and it says X is related to Y if they satisfy this equation. So if 1 plus X squared is equal to Y squared, X, Y will be in the relation. Now, when is a relation a function? And when is it not a function? Well, if we have that for every x in the domain, x gets mapped to a single element in the codomain, like some y, then this is going to be a function. If we have that we can find any x in the codomain, that gets mapped to two different values or elements in the codomain. Let's say a y and a different z, then this is not going to be a function. So let's take a look at this r. The relation is defined by 1 plus x squared must be equal to y squared. We want to find a counterexample to show that we can find an x that is related or that gets mapped by this relation to two different values or elements in the codomain. The easiest way to spot this is to take this equation and to try, if it's possible, to try and solve it for y. So if we solve this for y, we will get y is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus x squared. How do we get this? Well, we just take the square root on both sides. Now, in this example, it's actually quite easy to see. Suppose we let x be equal to 0. If this is the case, then we get that y must be equal to plus or minus the square root of 1. So this means y is plus or minus 1. We get two different y values that are related to the same x value. So if this is the case, we can say, well, 0 is related to 1, but at the same time, 0 is also related to negative 1. So 0, 1 and 0, negative 1 are in the relation R. And so R is not a function. For our second example, we also have a relation defined on the real numbers, and it says x and y are related if they satisfy the equation y squared minus x is equal to zero. Now, if we take this equation and we try and solve it for y, first we will get y squared is equal to x, and if we solve this for y, we get y is plus or minus the square root of x. Now here we need to be careful. We can't just pick any x because if x is equal to 0, we get y is equal to plus or minus 0, which is just 0. We don't get a nice counterexample to show that x is related to two different elements in the codomain. So here let's pick something like x is equal to 1. Well then we saw that y must be plus or minus the square root of 1, so y is plus or minus 1. And again, if we choose these values, we have 1, which is our x, related to positive 1, and we also have 1, negative 1. These ordered pairs are both in the relation, so it is not a function. We can use a diagram to show this. The element 1 is being mapped to both 1 as well as negative 1. So this is not a relation. Here is another example of a relation on the real numbers that is not a function x and y are related if they satisfy this equation. So y squared minus x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. 
And again, we can do the same approach. We can attempt to solve this equation for y. If we do this, the first one we get is y squared will be equal to x squared plus 4. And if we solve this for y, we will get y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 4. And here we can pick any x that we like. I'm going to pick the easiest one, let x be equal to 0. Then this means y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 0 squared plus 4. So y is plus or minus 2. So here's our counterexample. 0 and 2 is in the relation. And at the same time, 0, negative 2 is in the relation. So we have that 0 is related to both 2 and negative 2 at the same time. So this is not a function. For our last example, we again have a relation on the real numbers, and it says x and y are related if they satisfy the equation. x squared plus 6xy plus y squared is equal to 4. In some cases, it might be difficult, or it might not even be possible to solve the equation for y, like we did in the previous examples. So how on earth would we then try and find a counterexample to show it's not a function? Well, we are going to start with a basic assumption. So we are going to start by assuming that x and y are in the relation and that xz is in the relation. Now for the moment, we are going to assume x is in the real numbers where this is our domain. And we are going to assume y and z is in the codomain. So in this case, it's the same set. It's the real numbers. But we don't make any other assumptions from here. y and z could be distinct or different elements in R, or they could be the same. Okay. We are just making the assumption that x and y are related and x and z are related. So we get the following. If x and y are related, they satisfy the equation. So this means x squared plus 6xy plus y squared is equal to 4. And our other assumption, xz being related, this means if we also plug xz into the equation, it satisfies it. So here we have x squared plus 6xz plus z squared must be equal to 4 as well. So we are just going to run with this and see where it takes us, right? Both x squared plus 6xy plus y squared and x squared plus 6xz plus z squared is equal to 4. So these expressions on the left-hand side must be equal to each other as well. So this should give us x squared plus 6xy plus y squared has to be equal to x squared plus 6xz plus z squared. All right, so far so good. On both sides of the equation, sides we have x squared so we can cancel them but then we can't go much further so this is what we end up with this implies that 6xy plus y squared must be equal to 6xz plus z squared where do we go from here well we are going to take everything over to one side of the equation and see if we can find something that we can do with it. All right, so what we are going to say is this will imply that 6xy plus y squared minus 6xz 
minus z squared has to be equal to zero. Let's try and see if we can take this expression and factorize it. What I do see if we group it together, this goes back to a little bit of high school mathematics. If we group together the squares, so the y squared minus z squared, there's a difference of squares that we could maybe use. Plus, we have 6xy minus 6xz. So if we group together these two, there's a common 6x that we can factorize out. So let's do that. 6x, what's going to be left? We will have a y minus z something that could link in nicely with the difference of squares. Okay, so let's factorize the difference of squares there. This will give us y minus z times y plus z plus 6x times y minus z. And this is perfect, right? Because now we have a common bracket, y minus z. So we can factorize that out. So if we take out y minus z, what's going to be left? Well, we will have left y plus z plus 6x. So either y minus z is equal to 0, or actually y must be equal to z, or we get that y plus z plus 6x is equal to zero. This actually gives us our two options. If we have the first one, so if the result from our assumption is that y has to be equal to z, this means we are dealing with a function. In the other case where this is not true and we have to have that y plus z plus 6x is equal to zero, this is our counterexample. This is where we find our example where this r is not a function. Okay, we want to show it's not a function. So we are going to focus on the second result. y plus z plus 6x is equal to zero. So we are going to assume y is not equal to z in this case. We want to try and find two different, um, two different real numbers. Okay, where do we go from here? What I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on that. y plus z plus 6x is equal to 0. And we are going to assume that y is not equal to z. So we need to find an x, a y, and a z where y is not equal to z. That satisfies this equation. Y plus Z is e plus 6X is equal to zero. So again, I'm going to start with, let's pick X is equal to zero just to make it easy. So if we let X is equal to zero, we are trying to find a Y plus Z, which is equal to zero where y and z are not equal to each other. Right. We also have a specific constraint. Now, what is it? In our first equation, let's highlight it here from our first assumption, x squared plus 6xy plus y squared must be equal to 4. Our x is equal to 0. So it means y squared must be equal to 4. Our second condition is that we assumed x squared plus 6xz plus z squared is equal to 4. And we've just let x be equal to 0. So this means that z squared must be equal to 4. So we need to pick a y and a z, where if we add them to each other, we get zero, but they have to satisfy y squared is equal to four, and z squared must be equal to four as well. This leaves it open. You can decide how you would like to pick it, 
but I'm going to say let y be equal to 2 and let z be equal to negative 2. Then we get y plus z is equal to 0. It does satisfy our hypothesis or our assumptions. And in this case, what do we get? Well, this would mean that 0, 2 is in R and 0, negative 2 is in R. So R is not a function. This is an extremely long explanation of how to get a possible counterexample. Again, if you can take a look at this equation and you can immediately spot for a specific x value, you get two different y values, um, you can absolutely go for it. If you don't see it, you can attempt the proof and see that the proof results in two different cases. One where it could result in a function and the other where it does not result in a function. A shortcut for all of this that we've just done would be to take this equation that defines the relation and already say, let x be equal to zero because this is in the domain, x is allowed to be zero. If this is the case, we end up with the equation y squared is equal to 4, or y is equal to plus or minus 2. And there we have our counterexample. For a specific x value, we get two different y values.